So I'm always on the hunt for the perfect monitor, and honestly, I don't really think it quite exists yet. I've been using my Apple Studio display for about a year now, and while it's surely an amazing monitor, it's hyper-focused on just one singular use, creative work on a Mac. And while there's so many different monitors out, a perfect monitor for me falls between having an OLED display, a large size, a high resolution, and the versatility to go from both console and PC gaming to creative and office work. So taking price, specifications, and usability into account, turns out it's actually not that bad have an idea to use the LG 42 inch C2 OLED as a monitor. It has the OLED, the 4K resolution, and unlike my studio display, it can connect the PC and gaming console. So today I'll be reviewing the LG C2 OLED as a monitor, the specs, my setup, gaming and computer usage, as well as some deal breakers. I will have everything in my setup linked down below in the video description as well. And of course, this video will primarily be me fanboying about how great the LG C2 OLED is, but I do want to take a quick moment to thank today's video sponsor, NordVPN. VPNs are notorious for slowing down our online gaming sessions, but NordVPN is proven and tested as the fastest VPN network that has crushed my expectations for connection speeds, especially while gaming. While using NordVPN, I was even able to claw myself up to Grandmasters in competitive Overwatch, so it really is impressive. And if you want to double down on security, NordVPN also includes features to encrypt your traffic twice while maintaining high speeds. Don't sacrifice protection or connection speeds while gaming with NordVPN, and be sure to check the link down below in the video description to sign up and earn a free gift. It's not just the VPN either. Nord helps protect against system threats, online security, and works across multiple platforms like Android, iOS, PC, and Mac. There's a 30-day money-back guarantee, so go to www.nordvpn.com slash minimalistech and get a two-year plan and four months free. And thanks again to Nord for sponsoring today's video. Right, so going back to my studio display, totally amazing monitor, great color accuracy, super high resolution at 5K, 60 hertz, speakers, and a webcam. The issue is there's literally only one Thunderbolt port for connections, so I can't hook up a console, a PC, or anything else, which sort of crumbles its usability. Spec-wise though, comparatively, like I mentioned, the LG C2 OLED has a high-res 4K panel, and in the name itself, it's OLED. It has four HDMI 2.1 ports, which is plenty to hook up my PC, Mac, and game consoles. The only thing here I'm missing is the built-in webcam from my studio display, but I can always use one separately. With the OLED panel comes a slew of benefits such as perfect blacks with insanely vibrant colors, not to mention the 120Hz refresh rate for HDMI 2.1 devices. For myself, as an avid gamer too, this is one of the top-used TVs for gaming, which is also why I have a larger one in my living room for console gaming. With a 0.2 millisecond response time, input is nearly instant for both gaming and daily use. Keystrokes and mouse clicks don't have that awful lag like when using a TV as a monitor in general. Thanks to this TV's built-in game mode, which enables its auto low latency feature, it ends up feeling like a legit monitor. And okay, so why did I choose the LG C2 OLED instead of another OLED monitor? Well, a couple of reasons. First being, the pickings are still rather slim when it comes down to getting an OLED monitor in general. There's some sweet options coming out from Gigabyte, LG themselves, Dell, and others, but the difference for me mostly is price. Dell and LG have the ultra-wide OLEDs, which are awesome, and I've actually reviewed LG's ultra-wide OLED, which sits right over here. It's freaking incredible, but if I were to stick with just a 16 by 9 aspect ratio at 4K resolution, the options are even slimmer. Gigabyte's option is 48 inches, which is absolutely massive, and everything else is ultra-wide or only 1440p, which leaves Asus's ROG Swift 41 and a half inch monitor. The thing is, although the ROG Swift has that sweet, sweet display port, it's a good chunk more expensive than the LG C2 OLED, so while not technically a monitor, the C2 OLED again drives a competitive bargain, especially since it's frequently on sale. But you've heard all the specs and why I picked the C2 OLED as a monitor, so how do I end up using it? Well, it's definitely a mixed bag, but for me, having used the C2 OLED in my living room for a while, one of my main uses is of course console gaming. I used to be a PC gamer for years and years, up until my daughter was born about two years ago, and honestly, at the end of a long workday after parenting and being present for my family, it's been more relaxing and simply easier to just melt into my couch or desk and grab a controller and game. So much so, my entire last video was dedicated to using this TV in a desk setup with just consoles, and again, that was an incredible experience. For this video though, I've got this more in a traditional desk setup for multi-use, but I do want to touch on console gaming since it is a big part of my daily use. And straight up, it's awesome. Again, the 4K 120Hz HDR is simply beautiful to game on, and it's actually super easy swapping to a console after working a while and giving myself that nice break to get stomped by children in Call of Duty. Even at a desk, the 42 inch size is rather big, but it's still super manageable. The built-in game menu is pretty sweet too for being able to easily see your refresh rate, and since this is VRR and AMD FreeSync enabled, there's absolutely zero graphical issues when playing anything slow or fast-paced. 
And it's not just console gaming too. For myself at least, it's easy to forget my GPU still has an HDMI port, so PC gaming is still on the table. And the thing is, before the latest generation of consoles, I was solely a PC gamer. Going back to college, I was huge into World of Warcraft, which is longer ago than I'd care to admit, but more recently though, I've been playing Overwatch since its beta release, and I still find myself playing competitive since it's not as addicting as Warcraft. That said, it made me wonder, without a display port, how does the C2 OLED perform through HDMI? Short answer, perfectly fine. There is an issue with my setup though, but again, it worked fine. Upon setting this up, I actually didn't know that my RTX 2070 in my gaming PC didn't have HDMI 2.1 support, so I'm actually limited to only 4K 60Hz, probably something I should have checked, but I would need at least an RTX 30 series or 40 series to get 2.1 support. Since HDMI 2.0 can still support 1440 at 120Hz, I did test this and it works, again, perfectly fine. If you can do without the higher 4K resolution, this is still super viable for older GPU usage and it'll match up well if you do end up upgrading. Either way, gaming stuff like Overwatch, Cyberpunk, and Red Dead Redemption look wildly good on this OLED display, so even if you're not a console gamer like myself, PC gaming is still easily a good option. And since not all of us are gamers, what about all the other stuff like regular computer usage? Well, I did end up testing this a bunch of ways, including editing this video, working my day job as an accountant, as well as light photo editing and simple everyday things. And there are a couple things that really stood out to me as well. And spoiler, it handles nearly perfectly as a monitor. An unexpected benefit simply is the size of this display and the PPI. Starting with my creative work, as a beginner creative, I spend a load of time editing my YouTube videos and honestly, having a well-sized OLED display like this is actually badass. The size of this monitor works really well, having my timeline spread the heck out, all while giving me ample space to work with my clips and scene viewer. One of the things I didn't quite realize would be as awesome as it is, is actually having a glossy display. Don't get me wrong, the anti-glare coating we normally see on monitors really isn't that bad, but the clarity on a display like this with a glossy finish is great. For me at least, in my setup, its back is against the window, so really I only need to worry about reflections from my lamp or if I'm filming content. And I'm not going to pretend I'm some master color grader either, but when it comes to editing videos or photos, photos, again the OLED shines when it comes to colors and blacks. And for my day job, I do work as an accountant, so there's loads of numbers and text of course, and even though this is a 42 inch display, everything shows up decently with a PPI of 99. Of course, it's not as good as a 34 inch ultra wide or a smaller 4K monitor, but it is a brilliant trade off, especially for the display size. I am a sucker for this, mainly because it comfortably fits four or more windows with plenty of space to work within. And like I mentioned before, I've been down the path of trying a bunch of different monitors. Some have cool features like backlit RGBs or not so great ones like the most awful speakers in existence for a monitor. So I do want to talk about all of the extras you get with the C2 as a monitor, and that's actually starting with the speakers. When it comes to monitors, simply put, most come with the worst speakers and are usually just included to tick a checkbox, and a lot more monitors don't have any speakers at all. You can pay $1600 for an Apple Studio display, which has the best speakers I've ever heard on a monitor, you could cough up some cash for some good external speakers, or do neither and just use the built-in speakers on the C2 OLED. As a TV, it truly actually has to have decent enough speakers, and they definitely do deliver. For a smart TV as well, it has loads of apps built in like Netflix, Disney+, and if you're trying to watch content, you can take a more laid back approach and simply use the remote. I can imagine this being perfect for desk setups in a bedroom where you can just chill and use it as a TV. Now originally, I was worried that the size would be too large, even at 42 inches. Coming from a 27 inch display, I figured I'd be out of luck in my desk setup, but after getting this all hooked up, it actually fits incredibly well, and I briefly want to talk about what goes into this setup. For this desk setup, I'm using desk accessories from Grovemade, BenQ, and Pitaka. Starting with Grove made though, I've been a long time fan and the natural wood materials go well on any desk. I'm using the walnut desk shelf, which even with the 42 inch C2 fits well. I also use the walnut headphone stand and walnut vertical MacBook stand. I think you can tell I like walnut. On my desk itself is the wool extra large desk mat, which really helps accent the whole space. And for lighting, the BenQ Halo fits perfectly on top of the LG C2 OLED and mounts perfectly on the thin bezel. Lastly, I really, really dig using my iPad on this wireless charging stand from Pitaka. The iPad Mini 6 is the sleeper choice for most people these days, and I absolutely love it. So I've been through just about everything for this TV or monitor, but I'd like to highlight some of the strengths of this monitor as well as some potential deal breakers. Number one is probably the price to value you get in using this TV as a monitor itself. While not perfect, it does tick so many boxes between the versatility and ability to match so many setups. 
Although this also leads to one downside being that there is no display port. For me to use the full 4K resolution at high refresh rates, I'd need a 30 or 40 series GPU, which I don't think I'll be doing anytime soon. The second benefit here is simply that it's an OLED display. They're becoming more and more available in monitor format, but this has been out for a while and it's frequently discounted. And to mention one big possible deal breaker is that the display has an aggressive auto dim. Unless you're gaming or watching content, this display will gradually dim over time, which is mostly noticeable when doing word processing or working on any sort of spreadsheets. That said, you can still disable it, although it's not done easily. To do this, you'd have to buy this TV servicing remote to use backend menus since it's not available using the regular remote. and I believe this actually voids your warranty. For me, in my use case, once I notice the dimming, I simply just wiggle the heck out of my window, which brings it back to full brightness. So that just about covers it. The smallest size LG C2 OLED as a monitor throws some punches against mainstream monitor selections, and it does a damn good job. But let me know in the comments, would you ever consider using a TV like this as a monitor? If I had to choose between this or my Apple Studio display, I think the C2 OLED comes out on top. The raw performance, feature set, versatility, glorious OLED, and beautiful gaming make this a worthy choice for just about any setup. Anyways, I appreciate you all watching till the end. We'll catch you in the next video. Till next time.